internet, the audio portion, we also uh, video streaming tonight's game. Is it um, just me? Or, or do you picture Don Rebel when he's making that cut for, for the opening? Do you picture him just sitting in the studio, uh, all Metallica in and out, and just, just playing the drums? Well, I wouldn't give him much credit as far as going to Metallica. Okay. I do see him playing the air drums. Okay. Though, <laughs> as everyone should. But a good matchup, Brandon, on tap. Peter Township, oh. Bethel Park. They're high. They're ranked high in the standings. They're ranked high in the Frozen Five as far as MSA Sports. And as far as rivalry goes, it's a pretty good one as well. Two and three. Two and three going at it tonight. And and, and probably uh, two of the marquee programs in the state at the triple A level. Uh, with Peters Township last year being in the state playoffs, they won the Penguins Cup. Uh, they won their division. They, they won about everything else that they could have won last year uh, from Peters Township. And what can you say about Bethel Park? I mean, they've, they've always been there. That... that Flyer Orange has always been around. <laughs> you take a look back to last year's Penguin Cup Championship. These two teams were in the finals. Bethel Park was trying to repeat. They lost 4-2 to Peters Township. The uh, Indians winning their first Penguin Cup since 2005. And also, they went on to win the uh, Pennsylvania Cup. Bigger and better things actually awaited Bethel Park as uh, when they lost... They did not make the Pennsylvania Cup, but they, as well as Peter Township, won into the USA Hockey National Championships, which were, held, which were held in Omaha, Nebraska, the hotbed of hockey in the country. And they beat Illinois' Providence Catholic 2-1, to one, and Bethel Park was crowned the uh, national champion. So not a bad way to end the season for Jim McVay's Blackhawks. So what, what you're saying is they, they went on and they, they lost the, the state champion, the state the, PIHL title. But then they went on just won a national title. Ho -ho. It's, it's like losing the SEC title and then going on and winning it's the good national good way to title. recover. <laughs> good, good way to recover. Yeah, Jim McKay, his, his team is typically ready to play. Uh, otherwise known as Trey. He is Jim McKay the third, so uh, he'll be known as Trey this evening. And if I'm not mistaken, did you? No, that was the other one. Jim McVay is in his 17th year. Rick Tingle in his 10th year. If you look at the standings there, and we're just starting December, so it is fairly early in the season, but a lot of teams bunched with double-digit points at the top of the AAA standings, Brandon, including the Indians and the Blackhawks. Yeah, you got North Allegheny at 15 points with nine games played. Peters Township here tonight, eight games played. They have a game in hand with 14 points. Bethel Park, 13 points in nine games. Cannon Mack, 13 points in nine games. Seneca Valley, 12 and, and nine. And Butler, 11 and nine. Butler, who actually played Peters Township in their last game, uh, Peters Township beat them 3-1 to one, uh, earlier in the season as well. So something to keep in mind, especially whenever it comes down to, to standings and, and, you know, the playoff seeding, things like that. These are two teams that you can pretty much pencil in to uh, the Penguins Cup playoffs and just a matter of how far do they make it into it. So on one in the last three games for Bethel Park, Peters Township comes in to a hard-fought uh, loss to North Allegheny. They defeated Mount Lebanon 8-3 before that. As you mentioned, the 3-1 to one win over Butler. First of two meetings on the season between these two teams. And again, December the 2nd tonight, there could be much more emphasis on the meeting on February 20th yeah. <laughs> at Bethel Park between yeah. these two schools if the standings hold form all the way to the end of the season. Yeah, that's that's going to be a big game. That, that these, these schools, uh, not only are the coaches trying to get them ready for a night and see what they have tonight going into the playoffs, but, but certainly February 20th, they have, a, they have that date circled on their calendar, and, and that's where they're going to really tell who's who and who's going to play in the playoffs and who's, who's really going to make an impact for their teams. Both teams are out warming up. We'll take a break, be back with the starting goaltenders, and the opening face-off right after this. You're listening and watching PHL High School Hockey. It's sponsored by Tribut Total Media, and it's right here on the MSA Sports Network. Attention Steelers Nation, are you ready to tailgate McDonald's style? Start with two legendary Big Mac sandwiches. Team them up with two tasty McDouble sandwiches, two medium world famous fries, and a 10 piece chicken McNuggets, all for just $11.99. Introducing the new Steelers Fan Feast. With this many McDonald's favorites for only $11.99, there's no penalty for excessive celebration. There's something for every Steelers fan to love at McDonald's. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. We'll keep you warm this winter with a handcrafted white chocolate delight from Mick Cafe. 
sip the new white chocolate latte, dip into the whipped cream of a white chocolate mocha, or curl up with the new white hot chocolate. You'll be loving this winter with Nick Cafe at participating McDonald's for a limited time. East Suburban Sports Medicine, leaders in physical therapy, will help you get back into the game, feel better, play better, live better. Your hometown resource for physical therapy, East Suburban Sports Medicine. Take it from me, Bill Hillgrove. It's the best care, hands down. Monticello's Italian Restaurant has been serving the Pittsburgh community for over 34 years. With over five northern locations, there is one near you. Monticello's has been named the best pizza, best hoagies, and best Italian restaurant by the Tribune Review for three years in a row. Stop in at any Monticello's restaurant before or after your high school football game and mention that you heard us right here on the MSA Sports Network to receive a large traditional cheese pizza and four soft drinks for $12.99. For the complete menu and additional information, go to www.monticellos.com Monticello's a Pittsburgh favorite. The team at SMARC takes great pride in the company they've built and their growing presence in Pittsburgh. Strong values, steadfast dedication, and unwavering commitment extends well beyond the walls of SMARC facilities into virtually every facet of our local communities. From ongoing support for critical health and human services for families and children to youth sports and recreation programs. It's the many faces of SMARC that touch lives, instill hope, and provide opportunities to enhance and enrich the world around us. SMARC is proud to extend its support of local communities through its sports sponsorship with the MSA Sports Network. Welcome back to the Isoplex in South Point. Brandon Showers, Bob Workless on MSA Sports as the Bethel Park Blackhawks are getting set to take on the Peters Township Indians. Home game for Peters Township, Tony Lejeune gets the start in goal for the Indians. He'll be making his fifth start of the season. 3-1 and one on the year. Goals against average of 2.00. A save percentage of 9.17. And it's the workhorse in the net once again for the Bethel Park Blackhawks. Trey Lowe, given name William, goes by Trey as he is the third. He's played every minute of every game so far through 9 for Bethel Park. 6-2-1 and one on the season. A goals against average of 2.07. And a save percentage of 9.10. Trey's the only goaltender they have listed on their entire roster when you go up and down it. So I'd assume he, he's going to shoulder the workload the entire season and through the playoffs and everything else. Like you said, he, he's saving 91% of the shots he faces. Um, now coming into the game, Bethel Park is averaging 7.2 points per game. Uh, if you look over on the Peters Township side, they average 9.8 points per game. So be interesting to see which goaltender really stays on their stat line because both of them are averaging get, giving up a little over two or two points in the game on the on the season so far. 35 goals, 4-14 against for Peter Stalchip. 32 scored for Bethel Park, 19 against for the Blackhawks. Lowe actually had split time up until the playoffs and then he became the go-to guy and he was actually a main one of the main reasons they won the national championship. He was 3-0, three wins, uh, three goals allowed in those three games, including a shutout and a 9.51 save percentage on the uh, games they played in the national championship. So Trey Lowe is in the goal to our right. Bethel Park in the orange and black, the orange jerseys, the black shorts, the home jerseys for Peters Township, the white jerseys with the red shorts, and the puck is played into the Peters Township zone. Peters Township moving left to right on the audio portion across your keyboard. You can see that, obviously, in the video portion. And in the goal to our right is Tony Lejeune, the puck in the deep end for Peter Township. Matt Emilio plays it up to center ice, and Peter Township dumps it in. Back to play it is Jacob Muser for Bethel Park. Muser in his own zone, plays it back behind the net to his defense partner, Jack Wagner. Wagner up the right side. Good outlet for Ethan Wadoviak. He loses possession of the puck. Max Boss will go back and play it up the near boards, but a good pinching effort by Gary Sorrell, and puck comes the other way with Swalina. Colina comes in, puts a shot on the net. Lowe had trouble with it, still bouncing around. It was a centering pass by Peters Township, but couldn't quite get it onto the net. And Bethel Park can't clear. Good job to keep it in by Colina. Colina goes to the far side. It is played to the near side by Will Dowds and up the near boards. Bethel Park has a man on the outlet. Andrew Bello comes down the near side, takes a wrist shot, and then is stopped by Lejeune. Puck back behind the net for Quilina. Plays it on the backhand on the far side in his own zone. Nice give and go back to Quilina, and he gets it back to center ice. 
Skated off the puck there by Krasuski. Rule. He is knocked down on a good check. Actually, it was Bella who was knocked down, but really good check. Raymore got him. Raymore got him right across the middle. His head wasn't up. Yep, Krasuski's head was down, and Raymore made him pay for it. He goes for a line change. Bethel Park does. This puck is dumped the length of the ice. It's going to be icing against Peters Township. We played a minute and 47 seconds, and we're scoreless from the South Point or from the Isoplex in South Point. Yeah, both teams really kind of just filling each other out, trying to figure out what they what they have against them because neither team, and again, this is early in the season, but neither team wants to lose this game, go behind your rival, the team that you played against last year in the Penguins Cup Championship. Neither team wants to lose this game. Face off to the left of Lejeune. And it's played down to the Bethel Park end, and the Hawks will make a steal, and with speed, they'll come out of their own zone. Bryce Evans down the right wing, avoids a check. It's two on two. Evans to the right circle, but his shot blocked neatly by Carter Eckberg. But on the puck for Bethel Park is Jason Bauer. Bauer loses possession. The Indians clear. Nice return pass to Eckberg down the right wing side. Cuts in, lines his way down, but can't get a shot off. Now as he centers it to the short side, and a low angle shot from the goal line hits the outside of the net. Bethel Park comes to the near side in their own zone. In the right wing corner, they can't clear. Far boards, comes around to Gelarowski. Takes in stride, comes back near side to Eckberg. Thinks about shooting, good cross ice pass. Wrist shot, stick to side on a good save by Trey Lowe as he denied the top gun for Peter Township, Adam Alavi. And the puck is cleared the length of the ice. Icing is called against Bethel Park. Good shift for Peter Township. Good shift for Peters Township, but that, that's probably one of the smarter icings. In high school hockey, unlike professional hockey, you, you're afforded the opportunity to change after you ice the puck. Your players aren't forced to stay on the ice. And Bethel Park was trapped deep into their own end, had to do something, get it out, get it under the opposite end, take an icing, and get a face off. Oliver has scored four times on the season for Peters Township. This puck is cleared the length of the ice by the Blackhawks with Doviak. Takes a check, but he comes up with the puck. Good check by Wyatt, but Wadoviak working in the right wing corner. Loses it on the half boards. Scores free to spin a belly. He can't clear. Comes back around to the near side. And Peters will just let it leak back to center ice. Phelps plays it back in. The Hawks tag up, and in his own zone is Max Boss for Peters Township. Comes on the near side. Spinning with it is Cochran. Chase Cochran gets it out. Dumped right back in by the Blackhawks. They will tag up once again. Behind his own net, it is Max Boss. His pass, a dangerous one, but it comes through center ice and back into the Bethel Park zone. Ryan Phelps is on his horse. He gets it, and now Jace Cochran makes a steal. His backhand pass comes to the near side. Only players there, though, are the Bethel Park Blackhawks, and they will come up the near side. Actually, they try a cross ice path pass. Too far wide, could have played the puck, so no icing is called, and the Hawks chains on the fly. Peters tries the stretch pass. They cannot connect. Dumped back into the Indian zone by Bellow for Bethel Park. Ooh. The check on the near side. The Hawks Wyatt. try to win possession. Wyatt makes the check. They do keep it in. Falling down at the center point was Krzyzewski. And that shot goes wide in the near post. Played on the near boards. Krzyzewski on the puck for Bethel Park. Skates in and behind that. Comes along the goal line. Tries to walk it out front. Couldn't quite do it. Back in the near corner. Played to the near point. Now a wrist shot through traffic. Kind of a shot pass as Jacob Muser was at the far post, but a good read by Lejeune as he came out with a glove and made sure nothing was going to happen, and he's going to take the face off in his own zone. I'd say as of now, Bethel Park is absolutely dominating in the hit category. I'm not keeping track of hits tonight, uh, but Bethel Park is just on their forward check, not afraid to attack the puck, not afraid to try to cut the puck down and stop it from clearing out. Krzyzewski to take the face off. But it's one on a second effort. Bethel Park. Jake Raymore for Peters tries to throw it up the boards. I think it actually went around. We're going to get a hand pass. A glove was also loose on the ice. Bethel will go with a quick change. But the hand pass against Bethel Park will bring the face off outside of the Peters Township zone. Glove lost on the face off. Sticks got tied up a little bit, and the glove got pulled off with the stick as the Bethel Park player pulled his stick back. Um, gained possession of it again. Medour on the near boards. Tries to work it out. Ryan Mendorty does get some help by Quilina. Quilina dumps it in. Played by Trey Lowe. Leaves it there for his defense. Now the Hawks play it on the near boards. On the right wing side in their own zone. They jam it up. Peters comes away with the puck. They'll skate to the near point and then return. 
cleared out by Peters Township, or by Bethel, excuse me. They almost had a two-on-one. Good effort by Bryce Evans, but Eckford, Eckford was able to get back for Peters Township. Denies that, but on the puck on the far boards is Bryce Evans. Swings it around to the near point. Ryan Phelps puts it between the circles. The Hawks have it. Falling down, but keeping it alive is Spencer Balcom. And Balcom has to go back now to center ice. Eckberg plays it along the far boards, and the Hawks will back in it right into Eckberg. And again, give and take. He just plays it up the boards and out of the zone. Bethel Park will wind up from their own zone. The pass misfires, and it's going to be icing. Ooh. Called against Bethel Park with 11.20 to go in the scoreless first period. Rough. Rough set of series here for Bethel Park. They had a little bit of trouble once they got the faceoff in the offensive zone. Thought maybe they'd set up some offense. Weren't able to do it and played, played it mid-ice. Uh, then the icing call um, after that. Face-off to the right of low in the Bethel Park zone. Won cleanly by Louis McClendon. Behind the net, Bethel Park player has it, but he falls down on McClendon. Second effort gets it to the point. Kept in with the skate of Galarowski in front. And the only player there to play, Jacob Buser. On defense, gets it out of the way, out of harm's way for Bethel Park. And now a foot race on the near boards. Angelo Esposito is beaten to the puck. Good skating effort by Jake Raymore. Esposito is beaten to the puck and beaten off his skates as well. A little bit of a, a box-out move for Peters Township to get that puck. Raymore played it very well. The captain for the Indians to Colina. Colina backhands it up the far side. Comes to Ben Mountain who puts it into the zone. Bethel Park will flip it up and out of the zone to center ice. Hit from behind, and we're going to get a first penalty as Scott no, Colino's. No, a hand pass. Hand pass. I thought Colino might have been <laughs> cross checked. If the hand pass is the call, it'll be a face off in the neutral zone right near center ice. I, I thought it was an attempt at a cross check. I, I thought it was a well timed hit as well. As soon as he put his glove on the puck, he, the, the Bethel Park player came up behind him, made contact with him, and basically forced him to make the hand pass. But the Park wins the draw. Krzyzewski gets it back to his defense, but stepping in and intercepting is Peter Stoutchip. It was Sam Barnes, but it's intercepted and dumped in by the Hawks. Back in their own zone, the Indians will play it. Good move to skate behind the net, and they'll play it around to Carter Eckberg. Eckberg skates it out of his own zone. Now comes up the right wing side with speed. Eckberg trying to go end-to-end. -end. Comes along the right goal. Centering pass is a beauty, but it's fired wide. Good job by Giovanni Carbonara, I believe, and he just deflected it wide. Now another shot. Stop by low. Rebound. Turning with it. They can't get it in there. It's actually Olivier who had that opportunity. He had the second opportunity. This shot from the new point by Eckberg is blocked and cleared out by the Hawks. Look at that. Bellow comes back. One on one. That shot is blocked neatly by Gilarowski. And Zach Gilarowski comes up the left wing, but he's one on four, so he wisely dumps it in. Does take a hit from Spencer Balcom. It's played to the near side, and now another Indian is knocked down, and coming down the left wing side, Bryce Evans for Bethel Park, dumps it in for Spencer Balcom. Balcom loses it behind the net. Zach Gilarowski backhands it to the near side, played up the near boards to the blue line, and then the second effort, clearing out of the zone, Sam Barnes. And tell these teams aren't best friends. <laughs> All game, nothing but solid, powerful body checks. People going through bodies to make a check. Centering pass for Peter Stouchup, intercepted by Jack Wagner. You know, there are a lot of things, including proximity, location. Yeah. But I think they're both good. <laughs> one of the best things that adds in the rivalry is when the teams are good. Yeah, they're, when they're both good. <laughs> These teams are <laughs> very good <laughs> and have been. So they like to get it together, and they get it on. And it's plays into this rivalry matchup between these two schools. Out of his own zone, nice job by Max Boss to gain the red line. He dumps it in, giving Chase his spin of belly for Peters, but on the puck, Bethel Park, they try a long outlet. Antonio Esposito was behind the defense, but that pass was easily picked off by Boss, and they're cleared right back in for the Indians. Jack Wagner is on it. Outlets up the far side, and Balkan dumps it in. He'll chase off in a line change. Has Max Boss in his own zone. Plays it up the near side of Bedour, and he gets it back to center ice. Ryan Phelps off the bench. Dumps it in. The Hawks have to tag up, and they do so. No offsides forthcoming. Played on the far side. Good effort to get the puck and clear the zone by Brady Cochran. But it's dumped back in by Bethel Park, and this time we're going to get an icing call as the Hawks apparently did not gain the red line, we're almost halfway through, actually more than halfway through, period number one, 7.50 to go. 
scoreless between Bethel Park and Peter Stalchip. Here on the MSA Sports Network audio and video broadcast brought to you by Trib Total Media. That was real, real close to getting the red line and dumping it in. Uh, he might have been just maybe a step behind. Bethel wins the faceoff and the backhand and out of their own zone. Played a good job to take the check and turn by Matt Tylenda. Oh. And now the left wing side off sides is called against Peter Stalchip. So they'll face it off just outside of the Bethel Park blue line to our right. Bethel Park trying the, the, dump, and, the dump and chase um, offense right now. Not able to really get it going. Uh, Got to maybe get a little bit of offensive pressure set up and, and set up some plays instead of dumping it down. Matt Emilio actually won that face off forward. But Bethel Park steals the puck, comes to Emilio, who one-hands it into the Hawk zone for Jacob Muser. Muser turns it over and almost created a good opportunity for Medor. Medor does get a shot, but it never made it cleanly through. Wagner with the block. He went down on one knee, put his calf right in front of, those, uh, in front of the puck. He had time to recover. Medor could not get it cleanly. Penalty upcoming against Peter Stalchip. It is dumped into the near side of the Peter Stalchip zone. And Bethel Park does get a sixth attacker on. Good shot from a low angle. Taken from the near goal line by Louis McClendon. That was stopped by Lejeune. And Bethel Park will now go on the first power play opportunity in this contest. It's going to be uh, Amelio come, uh, come off for hooking on the play. Emilio, sorry. Emilio come off for hooking on the play. Uh, first power play opportunity. Interested to see what Bethel Park does here if they do set up their offense uh, with a five on four with the offensive zone faceoff. 9.57 looking call against Emilio. Faceoff is one. Comes to Jack Wagner. Wagner goes to the far point. Shot deflected in front. And doing the splits to keep it out of there was Lejeune. Nice deflection from the far post by Bello, but a better job to spray the legs for Lejeune. Now it's picked up behind the net by Peter Stalchip. And they clear it the length of the ice, 20 seconds into the power play for Bethel Park. Yeah, exactly what Lejeune wants to do there um, on that deflection opportunity. Get your get your pad down on the ice, and then trust your body to be in position as well for the deflection. Look, look out. Look out. Short-handed breakaway for Carbonara. In goes to the backhand, and he shot it wide. Carbonara was open from about 100 feet. One forehand, backhand, the right-handed shot, but he missed the net on a golden short-handed opportunity. Bad change from Bethel Park. That's what sh set up that shorty opportunity there. Just wasn't able to put it in the net. There were about two players right next to the bench trying to get off the ice. Here come the Hawks. Three on two down the right side. A little bit too far ahead for Krzyzewski, but he plays it back behind the net. Comes into the left-wing corner. Has some support with Bryce Evans. Now back to Krzyzewski in the near circle. At the near point was Esposito, but the pass splits Esposito and Spencer Balkerman goes back into the Hawks zone. 43 seconds to go on the power play. Good speed, blocking it, backhand shot, and that missed the net. Great opportunity by Spencer Balkum to come in on the power play, but he went to the backhand and misfired. Yeah, he came from his own blue line, gained the zone, put it right on the net, or put it toward the net, just couldn't get enough on it to put it at the net itself. Great head of steam to create that opportunity. But the park player falls down, comes back into the Indian zone, Ekberg. Finds his teammate Sam Barnes with 10 seconds to go. Short-handed, Alavi with a shot. And it is saved by Trey Lowe. He holds on. Good so penalty kill. Good penalty kill out of Peters Township um, on this series here. Down to about nine seconds to go. Offensive zone faceoff. Really prevented Bethel Park uh, from setting up anything offensively on the power play. Great opportunity early for Carbonara. The short-handed breakaway. Then Alavi. On the uh, shot late, faceoff was won by Alavi, but sticked aside by Lowe. Peters Township three seconds away from killing the penalty. And back on the ice comes Emilio. And Emilio makes it five on five. Slap shot is blocked as Lou McClendon came in, but the Indians block that. Comes to the right point shot. Wister blocked. Alavi counters three on three. Alavi down the near side. Good stick work by Jacob Muser to clear that away. How soft are Alavi's hands? He took a slap shot right onto the puck or onto the stick there and actually cradled the puck almost like it was a pass and, and created the break. Those are goal scorers' hands, my friend. Hey, penalty. penalty forthcoming, and I believe it's going to be Peters. against Peter Township once again. As it looks like Max Boss will be the guilty party. No, I, I apologize, Max Boss. It is actually. Rebels. Uh, Gavin Rebels. 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 
Tripping. So Super tripping the call. Time of this penalty. Comes at 12.29 of the first period. Second power play opportunity. On five on four for Bethel. Good job to win the face off to fight for it by Bello. Comes to the center point. That shot by Wagner was more of a shot pass. It missed the net. Peter Stalchip gets possession and they clear the zone. And again, Bethel not able to set themselves up offensively on the power play as of yet on this power play as well. That'll be about three and a half or two and a half, yeah, three and a half minutes or so of not being able to set up an offense. Only 30 seconds we're gonna get a whistle. And a Bethel Park potentially a hand pass. I didn't see what Maybe the, the puck was. went out of the zone, but it's only been 30 seconds between Emilio's penalty and Red Bulls' penalty, so it's almost an extended kill for Peters Township. But you're right, Bethel Park has not had a lot of setup time in the offensive zone on either power play. We're only 35 seconds into this one. Bethel in their own zone. They win the faceoff. Antonio Esposito plays it on the near side. Good forechecking effort by Colina. Bethel Park has to reset. Interference. And now we get a whistle. Interference on number 23. That's Esposito called for interference. Yeah, he he uh, he ran the old pick and roll there on, on that pass in the, in, the, in the defensive zone. Good old pick and roll. 13-15 the time of the year interference call against Antonio Esposito. Friday night here on MSA, the pick and roll will become legal. Yeah, well, but <laughs> we're a little early yet. As basketball starts. This Friday, football just winds down. Football basketball is winding down. Some basketball p- starts to ramp up with hockey. Basketball starts with some tip-off tournaments. A Where lot of at? action here. I go to Upper St. Clair on Friday night. That's a great tournament. I was there last cleaners. year. I was there last year. That's a great tournament. Been there at least four or five straight years to start the season. So it is a good tournament. So a minute 14 of four on four play, and then 46 seconds. And Peters Township will have an abbreviated man advantage at the end of this. As 3.39 remain in period number one. We're scoreless at the isoplex. Hawks in their own zone. They'll skid it up the near side. A long outlet. Can't find it. Evans. And Peters Township takes it right back into the zone. Clear the center ice by Bryce Evans. He just dumps it in. And in his own zone, it is Jake Raymore for the Indians. Outlet stolen. Good job to find it by Louis McClendon. McClendon skates in centering pass. Oh, oh. Well, he found the tell of Bryce Evans, but Evans just couldn't tee it up cleanly, or it might have been one to nothing. Evans had the entire net to work with there. He just couldn't get a stick on it. Sometimes you heal it. This time he towed it, and he towed it wide. Great opportunity on the nice pass by McClendon. In his own zone, Alevi will skate behind his own net with speed. Comes up. Makes a move around one minute. He's flying down the right wing side. Goes behind the net is Adam Alevi. But he gives it up. Bethel Park has it. Eight seconds to go on this four-on-four situation. Puck is played to the blue line but kept in. And now the Indians go five-on-four for 45 seconds now. The Hawks have possession, however, in their own zone. They'll skate it up and shoot it the length of the ice. Alevi with 11 points on the season. I have to add the two different setups together, or excuse me, 10 points on the season. I have to add the two different together. Bear with me for a moment. I found it difficult trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> 27 seconds to go behind the net. On the backhand for Peters Township is Brady Cochran, center point of Levy. Fires the low wrister. Good save by Lowe. And then he denies the rebound as well. Rebound came to Barnes. He tried to go forehand near side, but Lowe, moving from right to left, was up to the task. 11 points on the season. Four goals, seven assists between the t- two different numbers. Peters Township, they have a couple players that wear two different numbers or so on their jersey, so I was trying to add the two numbers together real quick. We're told when they wear their black jerseys, they have different numerals. Face off is one save of the game in this first period so far for Trey Lowe. Keeps it a scoreless game. Nine seconds to go on the man advantage. 150 to go in first period. Peters Township, a last effort. Coming down the left wing side, they'll skate it in. They have a man in front. They can't get it. They were five aside as back on the ice is Esposito. Peters still has possession in the attack zone. They'll dump it into the left wing corner. It's on the stick of Brady Cochran. And Cochran loses possession, comes to the near side. But Eckberg escapes in down the near boards to keep it on. Oh, he put it in front right through the crease. And no one for Peters Township could get a stick on it. Now a low angle shot. And a stick save with a paddle on the ice by Lowe. 
Behind the net, Peters Township. Man falls down, comes to the near side. Carter Eckberg skates backwards. Cross ice pass. A good one timer, but it missed the net. And now we get a whistle. And the net comes off its moorings. A face off forthcoming in the Pethel Park zone to the left of Trey Lowe with a minute nine to go in period number one. Ever since Bethel Park got that penalty called on them, they haven't really been able to set up any offense whatsoever uh, and get anything offensively going. Uh, Pierce Township completely just, just burying the puck in the offensive zone. Faceoff is controlled by Bethel Park. They flip it around to the far boards. Ethan Radoviak is crushed on the play. Knocked down by Rebels, but Rebels also fell down, but he kept the puck in, which is most important. Down the near boards comes Matt Emilio. Puts it around to the far side for Rebels. Dumps it in. Oh, a centering pass on the saucer pass. Deflected to the blue line. Kept in, and now on the puck for Bethel Park is Antonio Esposito. Esposito just dumps it in. And back behind the zone net to play Max Boss for Peters Township. The Rebels lost it in front, and the Wrist shot, partially deflected. Wadoviak couldn't get everything on it. And it trickled wide. Back behind it, and a centering pass. Comes through the crease to Rebels. He clears it up. And Madour comes in. But good stick work by Bethel Park to deny entry. And the Hawks looking for one last rush with 14 seconds to go. They dump it behind the Peters goal. Max Boss with it. Near side of Madour. Gets it to the blue line. And now does push it back to center ice with three seconds. Bethel Park with a last rush along Slapper. Misses the net by Jack Wagner. And the first period comes to an end. After one from the Isoplex in South Point, it is Peters Township and Bethel Park scoreless. You're listening and watching PHL High School Hockey, sponsored by Trib Total Media, only here on the MSA Sports Network. UPMC Sports Medicine is the region's largest and most experienced center dedicated to caring for athletes of all levels. And as we celebrate more than 25 years of world-class care, we're proud to offer more services, have more physicians, and treat more student-athletes than any other sports medicine provider in the region. Why would you choose to go anywhere else? To learn more, call 1-855-93-SPORT or visit upmcsportsmedicine.com. The history books are filled with the names of great athletes and great teams from Western Pennsylvania. They share stories of great victories and stunning defeats, but they all have one thing in common. They know the championship season is the time to be first. First Commonwealth Bank, proud sponsor of the WPIAL and the best high school athletes in Western Pennsylvania. First Commonwealth, time to be first. Life is about having the confidence to know you can do anything right. I get that at Carlo. I graduated with top awards, but beyond the classroom, Carlo helped me learn a lot about myself. Carlo brings out the best in you. I know I'm going to be a fantastic nurse. I know whatever I come across, I'll be prepared. I can't think of a better place to start the rest of my life, because at Carlo, I know I matter. I matter. I matter. Enroll at Carlo University, visit carlo.edu. Second period is underway. A couple of shot opportunities for Antonio Esposito blocked by Peters Township. And the Indians will come out of their own zone. The team's flip-flop. No ice got between the first and second period. So Peters Township on the audio side moving right to left for period number two opposite for Bethel Park. Trey Lowe in the goal to our left. Antonio Lejeune in the goal to our right. Puck is played back behind Lejeune. Carter Eckberg takes a nice check from Louis McClendon. And a good forechecking effort on the far boards by Bethel Park. And they keep it alive. It is Esposito. Comes to the near side and gaining the blue line is Carbonera. He dumps it in for Peters Township. Falling down beyond the net was Carter Eckberg on the forecheck. Check it. It was 35. That's Ben Mountain. Eckberg just made a nice little toe drag out of the blue line to prevent a turnover and prevent a breakaway for Bethel Park. In their own zone, Bethel Park with possession near boards. Wagner can't clear. Gilarowski gloves it down. Wrist shot from the top of the near circle. And that save is made by Trey Lowe. And he holds on to the rebound. Scoreless through the first period. Shots on goal. Nine for Peters Township. Six for Bethel Park in the first 17 minutes. Nine? That's what they said. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take their word for it because I only had six and four, so... 
Face off, wind center point, slop shot. A heavy blast by Eckberg, but he missed the net. Not sure if Lowe saw that cleanly. Near side pass. On the backhand is Zach Galarowski. Galarowski plays it in behind the cage. Ryan Phelps will play it to the far boards, but kept in by Eckberg. Eckberg skates around two defenders, goes to the right circle. Another move, the wrist shot. Up high. I'm not sure if Lowe got a glove on that or it went high. But a beautiful break in from the right point with a good opportunity for Tyler Eckberg, Carter Eckberg, excuse me. Eckberg showing his offensive skills. Oh, and a low angle shot on the turn by Spinabelli. And a good right pad save made by Lowe. The counter the other way. Bellow comes in. He can't shoot. He's angled into the near corner. Puck is in front. Turning backhand. That is stopped by Lejeune. And he covers up on the rebound as that puck was bouncing around in the blue paints. And Bethel Park almost was able to walk out in front and get a goal, but Lejeune was up to the task. Bethel Park did a good job there, turning defense into offense. They were trapped down in their zone for the majority of the second period so far. Took that puck, turned it into offense on that play there. Got a shot off and a really good shot as well. Hawks win the faceoff, and the shot from the left dot by Spencer Balkum goes over top the net. Played back into the near corner, backhanded around by Chad Wyatt for Peters. And out of the zone, the Indians come back 2 on 2. Sam Barnes forgot the puck. Good job in the poke check. And I want to say it was Balkum who got a stick in there and took it off the stick of Sam Barnes, who had a head of steam. Near side of Chad Wyatt, down the left wing side, plays it into the corner. And Jack Wagner has it for Bethel Park. Plays it up the boards. Can he get it out? No. Peter Township has it. They look to fire. It goes high in the air to the far corner, actually closer to the net than everyone thought. Almost chipped the goaltender hit off his back and rolled into the net. So maybe a little bit more careful there if you're yeah, low was backing, well. backing up and he didn't, I'm not sure he had sight of that pocket. That's that's so impossible to see. So Carbonara skates in from the near boards. His shot though was blocked by Muser. Into the far circle, picked off by Peters Township. Skating is turning. Olivy leaves it right there. And it's picked off by Bethel Park and they counter. With one man, a long, slow wrister, saved by Lejeune, and then Spencer Balkum is knocked down as he was trying to come to the bench for a line change. Hawks keep it in the zone, trying to attack. With speed was Wadoviak, but he was defended well, and Peters Township on the far side. They clear it up, but it's kept in at the far point by Phelps. Another opportunity for Peters. They can't clear. A good effort again by Ryan Phelps. Dumps it back behind the Peters net for Max Boss. Boss will backhand it into the neutral zone. Played right back in, however, by Ethan Wadoviak. Cleared up to the blue line, and it does come back outside of the zone, so Bethel has to tag out. That allows Peters Township to clear their zone. They line change as well. Hawks have it in their own zone. That's the more important part, is they were able to get a line change there. Knocked to the ice was Antonio Esposito. Wrist shot back the other way. And into the butterfly to make the save, holding on, is Tony Lejeune. Yeah, after, after getting the puck out of their own end, Peters Township was able to make a change there, uh, get some fresh bodies on the ice, and really try to turn the tide. Weren't able to do it. Ended up turning it over at the blue line and, and creating a uh, sh scoring opportunity for Bethel Park. Face off to our right in the zone, to our right to the right of Lejeune. Bethel Park wins it and getting the puck, retrieving. On the near boards was Krzyzewski who won the face off, but it's cleared out. And Madour, rather than skate with it one on one, Ryan Madour dumps it in and gives chase. He's the man on the puck. His centering pass, though, denied by Jacob Muser. Cleared to the far point, but kept in by Matt Tylenda. Behind the net, and a good check by Peter Township, but we're going to get a penalty. It comes to the Indians in front, and Brady Cochran is going to go to the penalty box. I'm not sure what the call is because it looked to me from this vantage point to to be a, a pretty clean check, a pretty clean hit. So I'll be interested to see what the referee says when he comes over. Well, the referees are conferring. You're thinking boarding, potentially maybe a shot to the head. I thought initially that Cochran had put a good check on the Bethel Park defender. That's the scary part. If they're conferring, this could be a boarding call. Roughing. They just called a roughing call. Okay. 
if you're in Peters Township, the last thing you want in that situation is a boarding call called on you. I believe in high school that's a game misconduct, if I'm not mistaken. And <laughs> Third, I'm not sure if it is, and I could be misreading that. I thought it was a debatable major. Okay. But roughing the call against Brady Cochran, so it's the third man advantage opportunity for Bethel Park in this contest. Peters Township has done a pretty good job of killing the penalties. The second one was abbreviated, which resulted in a brief power play opportunity for Peters Township. They're only one in the game. Jim McVeigh wants to have a word with the referee. Well, I mean, uh, Richard Tingle had a little conference with him as well on the Peters, or, uh, yeah, on the Peters bench. So the referee only has the um, almost the obligation to explain to him what's going on. Bethel Park down the near side, in, walking in, shooting it. They try to go near side, top shelf. Good shot by Balkan, but it went high and wide. Bethel has to go back in their own zone to clear it up for Bello. Bello's pass just too far for Krzyzewski, and it's cleared back to the Bethel Park blue line, and they'll set up on the near side on the attack is Louis McClendon. McClendon's wrist shot, and he missed top side, far side. So two shots in a row for Bethel Park, trying to go high on Lejeune. Both misfire. Back into the zone, Louis McClendon down the left wing side. Keeps it, it in, though, from his wallet. Good job to reach back with a stick. And pinching, and it does finally score it back to center ice. At his own blue line is Balkum. Near side, right side to Bellow. Bellow gains the zone. Stops on the near circle. Pass comes far side. Slap shot through traffic. Blocked in okay. front. Off the boards it comes. Norns. Now, did it go in or was the net off? No, That's the net off. never made in. The net is off. Because looked to me like taking it off the boards was Krzyzewski. And he almost reacted like he beat Lejeune. I think that he, was clearly off the board. So. I think he thought he did. And Lejeune did a good job getting from far post to near post. Get his foot down there. Made contact with the post. Pushed the net off the moorings. But it's all part of being a goaltender. <laughs> Face off to Lejeune's left. It's controlled by Peters Township, and they'll dump it around the far boards and the length of the ice. 35 seconds to go on the Bethel Park power play. They'll come out of their own zone with speed. Pass down the far side of Bryce Evans. Evans gains his own wrist shot. Stopped by Lejeune. Can't control the rebound. Dumped into the left wing corner. Bethel Park will fight for it along with Eckberg and trying to walk out. Getting the side of the neck was Evans, and it allows Peter Stalchip to gain possession and clear the zone. Played back by Trey Lowe behind his own net with eight seconds to go on the power play for the Hawks. Again, though, Peter Stalchip doing a good job on the penalty kill, really turning offense on a penalty kill. Alavi steals late, has a man in front. Oh, he just redirected. He kind of reset and then passed it behind Sam Barnes. Tricky little move as we're five aside. Alavi loses the puck and it's picked up and out of his own zone comes Jason Bauer. Bauer plays it up for Bryce Evans down the right wing side. But Eckberg denies him, takes the puck and clears the zone. And now it's Eckberg down the right side. Tries to get around him and great defensive play by Jack Wagner. He left his feet, but he made the play. Took the puck away from Eckberg. That's, that's the trickiest part about that play is you've got to make that play or you're really leaving your goalie out to dry. McClendon counterattacking with a two on one with Wadoviak, but the puck is deflected behind the net. Almost like a tackle in soccer. You've got to make sure you, yeah. in that sport, you play the ball. In this case, you need to play the puck or look out. If you miss it, countering, blocking, wrist shot, big blocker save as Brady Cochran came down the right side, but low, said no. That's how you win a national championship, is you have a goaltender back there that can just stop almost everything. And again on the puck, Brady Cochran. Cochran trying to force his way into the corner, can't get there. He gets some help late by Scott Weaver. Puck comes in front, loose to the right of the net, and reaching back and gloving the puck below the goal line was Trey Lowe, and that will force a faceoff in the Bethel Park zone with 9.04 to go in the second period. We're scoreless between Peters Township and Bethel Park. I was going to say, speaking of gloving the puck, uh, uh, Sam Barnes, uh, he uh, lost his glove on the far side near that 84 lumber sign. It sat there for a while. A couple of times the puck almost hit it. I'm surprised an official or a ref 
didn't pick it up and just skate over to the Peters Township bench and throw it on the bench for him. And Peters wins the faceoff and they dump it in behind the Bethel Park goal. And Matt Emilio is hammered on the near boards. A good check by Tyler Krzyzewski. Emilio though gets the puck. That shot is partially blocked. And Bethel Park has possession. Krzyzewski comes up the right side out of his own zone. He is one on two. Gets into the zone and we're going to get another penalty against Peters Township. Holding the call this time. Fourth man advantage opportunity forthcoming for Bethel Park. 8.21 mark on this one, right? Did I do the math right? You are correct, okay. sir. Remember last time I was doing a 20-minute period, and I'm like, ah, wait, no. 17-minute <laughs> period. And some people like that 17-minute period. I, I'm one of them. Uh, what do you think about it, Bob? Do you, do you like the 17 I, I instead go, of 15? I, I can go either way. I like the extra six minutes, but then again, I'm a symmetry guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, Three 15s is right. symmetrical. Right. I know. I'm odd. No, everyone, I, I, everyone knows that. That's that's where my thought process was at but first. I like, oh, for, well, that too. Uh, <laughs> for six extra minutes of high, high school hockey, I'll, uh, I'll take it. Second time in this game that the Gavin Rebels is into the penalty box. And now another. Well, the, the refs had a conference with both teams' captains. I, I think this is one of those things like, hey, guys, you know what? We let it go this far. We're not going to let it go any longer. This is, this is going to stop. We're going to start calling penalties, and we're going to start putting you in the box if you're making plays that are illegal. Two, like two well-respected, long-tenured, and successful coaches, so they will, may have some more leeway. Now Bethel Park is upset. Piers isn't happy. They're ready for the face-off, ready to go. And Bethel's sitting there almost like they called a timeout. I was, I was kind of thinking we might have gotten a, a two-minute bench minor for a delay of game on Bethel Park with how long this took. Either that or just drop the puck to Peters Township and let them skate up with it. A lengthy discussion, discussion at the penalty box. The Peters Township fans are heckling Jim McVeigh, but I'm quite certain that there is one coach among many quite certain that Jim McVeigh knows the rules. He's pretty good when it comes to finding some technicalities in the, uh, in the rule book. One of them being in the championship game last year against Peters Township. Brian Baker was the goaltender for Peters Township and uh, something with the color of his mask and they had made him he had to change his uh, mask. That's why they're wearing it. Yeah. Trying to figure out. Maybe been the longest discussion yeah. over hooking call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even a bull. I thought it was I thought it was holding actually, <laughs> but hooking is the call and we've got it straightened out. Bethel Park. Man advantage opportunity number four. Kept in at the far point by McClendon. Puts it in front, and it goes in! Not sure if Krzyzewski got the deflection, but it does end up behind Lejeune. It is a power play goal for the Blackhawks, and they lead one to nothing. 9.29, Mark, and we'll wait for the announcement because I don't know if there was a deflection there either or not. 8.29, actually. Eight. See? Will be a power play goal to face off this one. McClendon fired from the left point, and Krzyzewski was there. Not sure if he got the last stick on it, but it ends up in behind at Tony Lejeune, and Bethel Park does convert with a man advantage to take the one to nothing lead. Andrew Bella was also there, and he gets the actual deflection. Wagner on the um, assist as well. Jack Wagner on the assist. Bellows third of the year in all three on the power play for the game's first goal. I thought McClendon kept it at the point, but apparently kept it in the Wagner. So I thought McClendon was deserving of an assist. Well, but the Hawks, will, the Hawks will take it. They've drawn first blood at the 829 mark of period number two. Peter Stouchip now on the attack, but you would think with the penalties favoring uh, Peter Stouchip, four, they've been called for four. 
and Bethel Park with one is the law of averages, and that one was even abbreviated. That You may see Bethel Park maybe flagged for some penalty time. In his own zone, trying to get it out was Radoviak. Can't do it. Oh, we're going to get a little more more physicality out of Peters Township. Number 80, um, Adam Alevi, uh, just took a run at someone and just, just knocked him straight on his wallet. A good check on the far side by Eckberg to knock a Bethel Park player down. Through center ice, the Hawks will dump it in. The man falls down in front of the Hawks bench. It was Phelps, but he got it into the zone. Eckberg has to play it now. Bethel Park is on the delayed offside. And they tag up, and Eckberg sets it up from between the circles in the end to our right. Up the near boards. Alavi was there. He backhands it into the Bethel Park zone as Peters Township changes. Bethel Park does send Krzyzewski on the ice, and now a check as knocked down was Muser. And that shot saved by Lowe. Blocker saved. Lowe got his blocker up there and deflected it straight up. Right side, Krzyzewski on the attack. Wrist shot. There's a blocker saved by Lejeune. And a counter for Peters Township. 2-1-2 two two down the right side. Eckberg gets it into the zone. Gets around Phelps. In front. Chopping at the bounce. And caught was Cochran. But Lowe was able to make the save. <laughs> The pass was not clean. That was really the only thing Cochran could do. A shot back the other way. And a left pad save made by Lejeune. Cleared up the near side. Back to center ice. The Hawks are on it. Second effort for Will Dowds. He can't get it in. And Emilio comes in down the left wing side for Peters. His centering pass. Too far for Ryan Medor. Back into the corner for Matt Emilio. Emilio loses possession. And the Hawks will... Try to come out of their own zone. They're behind their own goal line, however. Turning with the puck on the backhand was Dowds. Clears it up the far side, but pinching in and keeping it in is Jake Raymore for Peters Township. Good job of coverage by Cochrane. He did a good job. Went, went back to um, his defenseman's position to prevent an odd man break. Bryce Evans down the right side, one on two with speed. Dumps the wrister to the net. That is sticked aside by Tony Lejeune. Played in the Peter Stout chip end by Jake Cochran. And there you go, the law of averages. Did they catch up? A roughing call forthcoming against Bethel Park. This is a this is a big power play for Peter's Township. If they can if they can set something up on this power play, maybe get themselves an equalizer goal. This is very important here. 11.42, the time of the rough. And Bryce Evans is the guilty party. Look at this. Tingle's going to take a book out of McKay's, uh, a page out of McKay's book. He's going to call his entire team to the bench and take his dear old time putting a, a power play unit onto the ice. Faceoff is just outside of the Peters Township blue line. Bethel Park, though, wins it. Balcom skates it in and dumps it in. Peters Township will set up in their own zone with the man advantage. Their second, the first one, was just a 42-second power play. Down the right side, Sam Barnes comes in, skates all the way around to the near circle. Gelorowski far point, Eckberg, slapper from the right block, from the top of the right circle, excuse me. That was blocked, and that hurt the Bethel Park defender. And another block, this time by Balkum. First block was uh, Will Dowds, who makes it to the bench, and that hurt Dowds. Yeah, he... He came up limp as soon as the puck hit him. I think he got his knee, came up limp, and actually uh, was trying to get a change right away. Wasn't able to clear the puck, though. Another good job of blocking shots. Peters Township gains the zone. They set up on the far side, the right side, center point, Eckberg. Back to Alevi. Near side, slapper. Blocking that is blocked. Up. Rebound, Gilarowski dumps it through. That block was by Phelps. Back to Gilarowski, left circle. Skates laterally, backwards, left point. Far side, right point to Eckberg. Eckberg goes to the left afterwards. Good pass to Barnes! And he slid it just wide from between the hashes. And it's gained and cleared by Bethel Park. You want to be a penalty killer on a hockey team? Get ready to give up your entire body. About three Bethel Park players took shots into the, the midsection and the leg region on that penalty kill. Peters Township guilty of icing the puck on this power play. 32 seconds left on their man advantage. 3.50 to go in the second period. A 1-0 lead. Andrew Bello, a power play goal for Bethel Park at 8.29 of period number two. The game's only goal so far. And Bethel will send out Spencer Balcom to take the face off.
is funded by Emilio. But the Park dumps it in. 25 seconds, and Peter Stalchip will try to set it up for one last rush on this power play opportunity. He'll come near side. Boss passed it up. That passed too far, though, for the door. But the Park gets it. They clear it. Be Good a news for Bethel Park. Dowds is right back out on the ice. Yeah. I think it was just a little bit of a sting uh, to his body there. Well, a you're, bit. you're a hockey player. Yeah, exactly. Takes more than a block shot. Unless it involves a broken bone. Penalty is over. Even then it sometimes takes more than a true. block shot. Back on the ice is Evans. So Bethel Park kills. <laughs> the first full of Peters Township power play. Hawks are in their own zone. To the far side, deflected up along the glass by Bauer, and a good outlet to Bryce Evans. Evans comes down to the left side. He is knocked off his skates, and that's going to be a penalty against Chad Wyatt. I'm waiting to see here. He might have had an unimpeded path to the net. Well, you're thinking that's what I'm a penalty shot. I'm not. No, no. It's, it's, it was real close to him having an unimpeded path to the net. There was a Bethel, another Bethel Park defender back there that might have saved it from the penalty shot there. Uh, put his body between the, the puck and the, the net. Tripping the call against Wyatt at 14-11. Fifth power play opportunity for Bethel Park. They're one for four with the man advantage. Face off to the right of Tony Lejeune. In the attack zone to a right. Won by Bethel Park. Skated in, walking in, shot through traffic. Bella was in front, couldn't deflect this one. And it is cleared by Peters Township. And, and sure that one power play goal, which was, a, to me, a fluke deflection, the Peters Township special teams has really shown up tonight. Ryan Phelps forces it ahead to Andrew Bello. Bello comes down the right wing side into the attack zone. Skates all the way around to the left corner. Now the left wing halfboards. Plays it back to the far point. Faking the slap shot was McClendon. They put it in front. Bethel Park had two players. Bello and Krzyzewski, but it deflected wide. McClendon, nice spin move the walk out. Dumps it back behind the net. This pass is deflected. Kept in though by Evans. Evans goes far side, left side to McClendon. Louis McClendon centering past to Evans. Wrist shot, now he passes it near side. Shot down low. I believe Lejeune got a piece of that. McClendon at the left point keeps it in. Krzyzewski centers it. Shot, big save. Now that was blocked on the opportunity by Phelps. The net oh, comes off the moorings, but a great diving block in front by Giovanni Carbonera. Again, that's the, that's the biggest part of a penalty killer is, is the willingness and, and the ability to just put your body in front of the puck and say, hey, you know what? Hit me. I don't care. Hit me. I'm stopping the puck from getting to my goaltender. Both, both penalty kills have been doing that all night. Giving up the body. Peter Township wins the faceoff. 45 seconds to go on this Bethel Park man advantage. Hawks have possession behind the Indians net. They'll skate to the right corner. Dump it to the top of the right circle. Skating in with a puck, but Bauckham lost it. And here comes Adam Alvey. Short-handed, left side. Stick handling, dangling. He found Barnes, and Barnes deflected it just wide. Boy, dangling was Alvey. Last rush for the Hawks with 20 seconds. They're back four men strong. Little drop pass to Bryce Evans. Evans near side. Alvey gets there and clears it back to center ice. As that pass was intended for Bauckham. Not quite deep enough, though, to kill off the penalty. There's going to be another rush for Bethel Park. And Under a minute to go in the period, and that will end the penalty. 50 seconds to go in period number two. Bethel Park now one for five with a man advantage. They'll skate to center ice. They'll lose the puck. Poked ahead by Weaver. But Bethel Park couldn't wind their way into the zone. Gilorowski goes back to his own zone. Up to uh, Scott Weaver, who deflects it into the zone. On the puck first was Brady Cochran. He put it in front. They had a man hanging around there. It was Jace Cochran, the brother, but they couldn't connect. Cleared on the far side, kept in. On the pinch by Carter Eckberg. How many times would you estimate they've done that play in the driveway? Just, just in a summer day or, or just a day outside? Shot the flock in front! And it was right on the stick of Cochran, and he couldn't tee it up cleanly. Low with the poke check. Came forward with his stick to, to poke it out of there. Slap shot deflected wide off the side of the cage. And that is it. And I believe if Brady Cochran is right-handed, yeah. it might be 1-1. Yeah, easily 1-1 there. And, and a good job by Lowe there to sprawl himself belly flat on the ice, put his stick to the puck, and just poke it loose. 
So it's been well played between teams two and three, according to the MSA. Fab five as far as Triple A, two and three as far as the standings in Class Triple A as well. Through two, it's Bethel Park one and Peters Township nothing. We'll take a break. Be back with the scoring recap right after this. You're listening and watching PIHL High School Hockey. It's sponsored by Trib Total Media, and it's right here on the MSA Sports Network. Energy assistance is available for people's customers this winter. LIHEAP, the low-income home energy assistance program, provides grants to help pay winter heating bills. These grants are not loans and do not need to be paid back. Funding is limited this winter, so it is important to apply for LIHEAP now. Learn more about how a LIHEAP grant can help you or someone you know. Find out if you're eligible for LIHEAP by calling 1-866-827-1281 or visit peoples-gas.com backslash LIHEAP. Make sure to follow the MSA Sports Network on social media this season for breaking news, scores, links to our articles, and much more. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash MSA Sports and get in on the conversation with thousands of local sports fans. Follow us on Twitter at MSA Sports and check out our YouTube channel, MSA Sports WPIL, for hundreds of video interviews with local student athletes, game highlights, and more. Whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or our websites, MSA Sports is the place to go for high school sports in Western Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Heinz Ward. If you're a high school sports fan, the place to go all year round is the MSA Sports Network. Log on every day to www.msasports.net for the schedules, the scores, the standings, the rankings, and of course, all of the broadcasts includes exclusive whip peel playoffs and championship action. Anytime, anywhere, always there, the MSA Sports Network. The team at SMARC takes great pride in the company they've built and their growing presence in Pittsburgh. Strong values, steadfast dedication, and unwavering commitment extends well beyond the walls of SMARC facilities into virtually every facet of our local communities. From ongoing support for critical health and human services for families and children to youth sports and recreation programs, it's the many faces of SMARC that touch lives, instill hope, and provide opportunities to enhance and enrich the world around us. SMARC is proud to extend its support of local communities through its sports sponsorship with the MSA Sports Network. The new home for the PIHL in 2014-2015 is the MSA Sports Network. Not only can you listen to audio broadcasts of high school hockey games online like in years past, but this year MSA Sports will be video streaming 25 games live and archived during the regular season with exclusive coverage of the 2015 Penguin Cup playoffs. Your audio and video home of the PIHL is the MSA Sports Network. Through two periods at the Isoplex in South Point. We've got a good one going on between Bethel Park and Peter Township. One to nothing. Bethel Park with the game's only goalie power play marker in the second period to take the one to nothing lead with Brandon Showers, Bob Orquist. Pretty evenly played uh, game so far. Two teams have got at it. Bethel Park has had the better of the power play opportunities, Brandon, with five, and they were able to take advantage of it halfway just a little more than halfway through the period. Yeah, Bethel Park uh, did a good job uh, setting up the power play. But I'll tell you what, those first three and a half, almost four power plays for Bethel Park, they had trouble setting up any offense whatsoever. Pierce Township's special teams uh, was really kind of making a case for uh, one of the MSA Sports uh, three stars of the game. Uh, the with, entire unit. Yeah, the, enti the entire power play and penalty kill both. Uh, because Peters Township, their power play really possessed the puck in the offensive zone. Didn't do much to turn it over. Just Bethel Park had that one deflection goal on them. So we'll see what ends up happening here. But I think the momentum's completely shifted over. I think I think Peters Township decided after that goal that they weren't going to go down without swinging, if you will, uh, with how physical this game has gotten after that goal. What Game's only goal came... At the 829 mark of the second period. 829 mark, power play goal by Andrew Bellow. Uh, Jack Wagner on the assist, 1 0. Unofficially, uh, Peters Township has 14 shots and Bethel Park has 15 shots, so uh, really quite straight down the middle. Uh, um, 1 for 5 on the power play for Peters and 0 for 2 for Bethel Park. So 
neither team really doing much power play wise. One more five is not your idea. More hockey action coming your way later this week. Check out the website, msasports.net, as we'll have that action for you. And then, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, tip off basketball tournament action on MSA Sports. Section play begins a week from this Friday. So, uh, we will get more into high school basketball coverage uh, next Friday, which is the. Uh, Tip off. 11th, right? Am I correct on that? Yes. Yeah. The 12th. The 12th. Friday's the 5th, so it'll be the 12th. Yeah, we'll have to the 12th. And then now uh, four WPIL teams are in the PIAA football playoffs. Clareton, South Fayette, Central Valley, Pine Richland playing uh, at various times on Friday. And then uh, one game, yeah, Pine Richland. Yeah, it's Pine Richland's a Saturday game in Altoona. All, f- all four of those games you can hear this weekend on the MSA Sports Network. Boy. These two teams are one to nothing lead for Bethel Park after two, courtesy of the Andrew Bellow power play. Go Bellow, three goals, and he's kind of a power play specialist. All three of his goals have come with the man advantage on the season for Bethel Park. And Bethel Park 6-2 and 1 coming into tonight's action. Peters Township at 7 and 1. North Allegheny, by the way, the team leading the classification, really not 60 away points. They're, they're not no, it's way early. <laughs> it. Again, you can go all the way down to Seneca Valley with 12 points. <coughs> 14 for Peters, 13 for Bethel Park and Cannon McMillan, 12 for Butler and Seneca Valley. So there is a lot that has to happen as far as the playoffs go. One thing different with the classification, no conferences this year in Class AAA. There are 12 teams, and I believe eight will qualify for the playoffs as far as PIHL and Class AAA will go. And of course you'll be able to hear exclusive coverage of the PIHL Penguin Cup playoffs right here on the MSA Sports Network. We expect either way in period number three for the Indians and the Blackhawks. Uh, I think Bethel Park comes out and just tries to almost ice the game, play a play a shutdown defense mentality. They're and that, enough. that has been their MO over right. the years right. under <laughs> Jim McVeigh. Get a goal lead and play deep. Throw, throw the blanket on it. Exactly. And then I wouldn't be surprised if Peters Township comes out, comes out completely swinging and just, just starts to get a little bit more physical, uh, a little bit more, I don't want to say chippy because it, it gives that negative connotation that you're doing something illegal. Almost a little bit more, hey, you know what, you're up one nothing, but we're not going down one nothing tonight. Uh, we're either going to overextend ourselves and, and give up a, a second goal, or we're going to play lockdown offense and, and just put the puck on the net and just pepper the net and, and make Trey Lowe uh, really shine. Trey Lowe has made 14 saves for the first two periods. Same for Tony Lejeune. The only puck that got behind him was the deflection by Andrew Bellow on the power play for Bethel Park. One to nothing, Blackhawks leading the Peters Township Indians. We'll take a break. Back with the third period right after this on the MSA Sports Network.
looking to replace your athletic field, choose ProGrass first in turf. ProGrass has installed over 500 fields in the U.S. Getting the best artificial turf for your field depends on both the product and the partner you choose. That's why architects, athletic directors, and players choose the ProGrass Performance System. ProGrass maintains an active presence in the synthetic turf industry as members of the Sports Turf Management Association and the American Sports Builder Association and is proud to be recognized as the FIFA Preferred Manufacturer. Call ProGrass today, 866 866- 2706003 or visit them on the web at www.prograsturf.com Prograss first in turf It's getting cold outside and getting dark way too early. That must mean one thing. Wrestling season is back. As the mats get rolled out in a gymnasium near you, be sure you tune in to Inside the WPIAL Wrestling Circle, Monday nights at 7 p.m. on the MSA Sports Network. We'll provide all the scores for around the WPIAL, focus on key matches, talk to coaches about their season, and provide in-depth analysis that you can't find anywhere else. So cozy up around the fire and tune in to Inside the WPIAL Wrestling Circle every Monday night at 7 p.m. on the MSA Sports Network. The history books are filled with the names of great athletes and great teams from Western Pennsylvania. They share stories of great victories and stunning defeats, but they all have one thing in common. They know the championship season is the time to be first. First Commonwealth Bank, proud sponsor of the WPIAL and the best high school athletes in Western Pennsylvania. First Commonwealth, time to be first. Welcome back to South Point, the Isoplex with Brandon Showers, Bob Workless on MSA Sports. Through two, it's the Bethel Park Blackhawks leading Peters Township by a score of one to nothing. Both teams have come out for the brief warm-up before period number three. Peters Township in the red and black, the white jerseys, actually. Uh, working left to right for this third period. We apologize, everyone. The black and orange working through a couple technical difficulties. Good job by Brandon. Also, Jason back at the control center helping us work through the technical difficulties. It should be a good third period. Between two of the top teams in class AAA. Andrew Bella, the game's only goal. 829 mark of the second period. A power play tally for Bethel Park. We're good. We're good. Two teams huddling up in front of their benches. Before we start the third period. Oh, right, we'll get your 50-50 out. Looking ahead, by the way, I mentioned that these two teams play in the next to last game of the season in the rematch for Bethel Park, another rivalry game that'll play until next Thursday, December the 11th. <laughs> and they will host uh, Mount Lebanon, so they get another rival. And Those Peter two don't Stoucher, like each other either. Peter Stoucher plays Thursday against Central Catholic, the team you and I were supposed to broadcast tonight. They were... The uh, Central Catholic Vikings. 
I think this weather got over top of those mountains around Altoona and just, just turned into like bucketing snow, it sounds. Because to not come down from State College with it all being highways it, or, or just straight ice, one of the two. And that canceled that game, which was scheduled to be our broadcast. So instead, we're bringing you a pretty good one between Peters Township yeah. and Bethel Park. Opening face-off in the third period, controlled by the Indians. On the far side, they're working to Brady Cochran, who had one of the golden opportunities in this game for Peters Township. He's had one. Carbonera has had a, a nice one on a short-handed breakaway. Sam Barnes has had a couple. Some of those have missed the net. The other ones have been stopped by Trey Lowe. Peters Township forced back in their own zone. They played on the near side. Try to set up from there. They go far side to Galarowski with speed. Winding his way into the zone, Zach Galarowski. Good skating. He still has the puck. Drops it back to the point. They'll come near side to Carter Eckberg. Eckberg at the right point. Doesn't have a shooting angle. He resets, but it's deflected back to center ice by the Blackhawks. Galarowski has to go back and play it. Back to Eckberg. Eckberg, good job to pick his pocket by Wadoviak. But doesn't result in any offense for Bethel Park. And we are watching Bethel Park, not a 90s rain or Devils game, right? Because they, they went straight into the 1 2 2 trap and just, just set it up and just not do the lockdown defense. And that again has been their MO. <laughs> Very reminiscent of the New Jersey Devils of years past. Did you see Marty Brodor's making a comeback? Sign a one year deal with the St. Louis Blues today. <laughs> Through center ice, Peters Township, man flying for the puck. Matt Emilio goes flying off his skates. That gives Bethel Park a chance to gain possession. Dumped in by Phelps, but he couldn't get it deep. It's played back into the Bethel Park zone, and Ryan Phelps has to go back. Good job to fake to his left and go right. It's cleared back to center ice off the stick of Chad Wyatt. Comes near side to Boss. Good outlet down the left wing side on the attack. Alavi wrist shot. From the half boards on the far side. The save is made by Trey Lowe, and he holds on. Man, that's the first real offense we've seen in this third period, and, and we're not expecting to see much offense out of Bethel Park. We're expecting to see much much more defense and just, just lock it down. Peters Township, though, really not able to break the trap and get anything offensively toward the net. Face off controlled in their own zone by the Blackhawks. On the backhand, Jack Wagner. He's been pretty good on the defense. Place it behind the net to Muser. He's been pretty good on the defense. Played up the boards, but it hits the netting. Bethel Park will see another faceoff coming up in the zone to our right, their defensive end. So we're just two minutes into, just over two minutes into the third period. A one to nothing lead for Bethel Park over Peters Township. Faceoff won by the Indians. They can't shoot it. Blocked, but not cleared. Second attempt is blocked, and this one is sent back to center ice by Bethel Park. Peters Township tries to dump it in, and they do, behind the Bethel Park net. On the far side, Sam Barnes tries to push it behind the net. He can't do it. Bethel Park clears the zone. Will it be long enough for icing? The answer is yes. Face off again in the hot zone. How cool is it that we, we video stream some of these games? How, how sweet is that? that <laughs> I, I say that every single hockey game I do with the cameras. And, that is... That is so sweet that <laughs> we've gotten that contract and exclusivity of it. And it's just, just another thing that makes me proud to work for MSI. <laughs> Looking at about 25 video stream games Plus throughout the, playoffs, the season. Right? Then the playoffs <laughs> on MSA Sports. We stream some football. We have game lights, which are excellent. One game we've a week. we some live stream One game games. a week, yeah. I'm sure that may continue as far as basketball season. Just more features to be your one-stop shop. It is Cyber Week, so it's it's still okay to talk about shopping, is it not? Yeah. Even sure. though Black Friday has passed oh. us by, thankfully. Yeah. Wow. That was that's a fun day. You know, shopping on Thanksgiving. One of the few days that I make sure I stay indoors. Yep. <laughs> and out of the way of all Anyone those crazy store. shoppers. Anyone in the store. <laughs> including Mrs. O. <laughs> Bethel Park steals at center ice after the face-off. Good job to go low and gain the zone by Jason Bauer, but he's knocked off his skates. Cleared by Colina. Right back to Bauer. Bauer tries to get around the defender, Ty Lenda. 
Tylenda slams Bauer into the far boards. Puck comes all the way around to the near side. Bethel Park will pinch in. Good effort by McClendon and Evans to keep it in. Back behind the goal line. And Someone's now, missing a stick. No, he's not. Never mind. Sorry. Man falls down. That allows Bethel Park to steal the puck and comes into the left wing corner. Left circle through big time traffic. Phelps was shot, missed the net. I'm not sure if I even saw that there was so much no. traffic. <laughs> if that puck's on net, that puck's in the back of the net with, with there are about six guys in front. Look out, break away now. Uh, I think it's going to go too far off the block by Colina. He does get to the puck first, however. Tries to backhand it in front. Good coverage, though, by Phelps. Peters Township does put it behind. They center it. Can't shoot it. Left circle, they fan. But the puck steals what they can't clear. Second opportunity for Dowds. Gets it to the blue line, but not out. Peters Township, a great job to keep it in. Great strength at the blue line by Galarowski. Puts it in behind the net all the way to the right wing corner. Play back behind the net, centering pass. Squirts through the crease as Carbonero was there. And is cleared out of the zone. That's going to be icing. Charged against Bethel Park. Let me throw, and we do this from time to time in all the sports. So let me throw an early candidate from me for name of the year. Giovanni Carbonero. Yeah, it, 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 it <laughs> he wins. Game over. It's not even. Not even no other nomination. Not even Italian. <laughs> Just like the name. But the park clears it up, trying to go for a two on one. You mean he's Italian? Back to get the puck was Carter Eckberg. I had a check. I originally thought he was Irish. Puck is played through the zone on the backhand to Gilarowski, and he backhands it away, giving chase by the Hawks. But Jack Wagner doesn't have to. Icing is called against Peters Township with 12:21 to go in the third period. And Bethel Park continuing to lead this contest two to one, courtesy of an Andrew Bellow power play goal in period number two. If you've never been here before, let's set the scene. We're we're on the bench's side of the ice. Scoreboard, basically a professional scoreboard short of the video board, video screen. Would you agree? You look across, there's a restaurant over on the far side. This is where Cannon McMillan, uh, Peters Township, uh, the, what is it, the Rink Rats, the South Point Rink Rats uh, play. It's just, it's a beautiful scene here. This is, this probably rivals Neville Island. Sometimes that Penguins team probably. Yeah, uh, yeah. Who? <laughs> You know, that other team yeah. in the city. The, the whole reason why high school hockey's really taken off in Pittsburgh, in my opinion, is is that Crosby guy and, and some Geno something or other. Peters on the attack. They come to the near point, but can't find the stick of Carter Eckberg cleanly, so he has to go back to center ice. Alvey, his pass is deflected. Good job by Cerrone to not allow that entry. Back near side to Carter Eckberg. Eckberg gains the line, good cross-ice pass. Alvey, soft shot, and he got all of it. <laughs> he got a little too know. much. I don't know if Lowe got a piece of it. I think by all of his reaction is he just missed it high and wide, although if you're looking at the face-off, it did hit low because the face-off is inside the Bethel Park zone. He got all of it and then some on that slap shot. It just, And then Lowe did a good job alertly just playing the puck and, and knocking it up, and Bethel Park has yet to have a shot on goal in the third period. Face-off controlled by the Hawks in their own zone. They'll work it back to center ice in the neutral zone. Peters Township can't regain the zone. And picking up the loose puck is Spencer Balkum. Balkum takes a check but gets it in behind Red Holtz. Third back to center ice. Good coverage on the far side by Dowds as Alavi was behind him. And now it's Eckberg. Gets oh. around him there. Walks in. He shoots and scores. A beauty for Carter Eckberg. And we're tied at one. Woo! My, oh my. Just, you talk about stick handling in a phone booth. Completely, completely oop de oop the guy underneath his leg. And I believe it went stick side over top of the shoulder on low. Came in and did absolutely put it between the legs of a Bethel Park defender. And then Eckberg went far side to beat Trey Low. And Carter Eckberg has goal number five on the season. And I beg to differ in any more spectacular as that. Oh, hello. Barnes. 
So Barnes and Spinabelli. Spinabelli. Who was a scratch? No, he's actually 70. He's 70 tonight? Okay. Yeah. Fair, uh, sorry. The goal numbers <laughs> strike again. But we're tied at one on a beautiful goal by Carter Eckberg. Got the pass, came down the right side, made a move around a defender. We do have an injured player down on the ice. Trying to see if I can pick up who it is. It's someone for Peters Township, I know that. He's on his knees now as the training staff EMT is out looking at him in his own zone. Looks to be maybe his chest. Head? He's right his head. I have to say, just, I think he just fixed his helmet initially. It okay. looked like 15. he was grabbing at his chest. Ryan Madour. Ryan Madour. We wish he's, him. A, he's up under his own power. He's looks a hockey player. Looks to be okay. Now he's looking, grabbing at his chin maybe. Unless he's just fixing his mouthpiece. But Madour seems to be okay. And he nods to his teammates and he was taken off his chin strap, I think, when he checked his chin. He looked like he looked, checked his chin. So we're tied at one. Faceoff is dumped back into the Peters Township zone. And the Indians, so well, they slip and fall as Max Boss blew a tire. But good job, good support by Chad Wyatt to clear it to the far side. And Peters does get it back to center ice. Good stop by Jack Wagner. We're checking it wasn't Wagner, it was Muser. And now a steal by the Indians. Here they come on the attack. Walking down the left wing side. They get it and score! Brady Cochran came down. Amelia was in front. Cochran threw it to the net. It hit something and found its way behind. Trey Lowe, 2 1 bet the Peters Township. Looks like Amelo might have gotten a stick on it. Everyone was patting him on the head. We'll await the official announcement. Emilio was in front. It was Cochran coming down the far side. Two goals in 42 seconds for Peter Township to take a 2-1 to one lead. And if it is Emilio, that'd be his first goal of the year. We'll have to wait for the official announcement. That's exactly what I'm doing. Liz Emilio is down on the ice. Gary Cerrone for Bethel Park. Brady Cochran and Chad Wyatt get the assists. So it was Eckberg, a tremendous individual effort at 5 48. And then Emilio, his first of the year. A dirty goal. But you'll take it if you're Peters Township. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get a single complaint out of a. Uh, out of one of the Indians. They're just, they're going to take that goal and, and run with it. And I didn't see who the Bethel Park player was down. He, he was slow. Yeah, to he move. got up on his own. He came off Sarone. He's okay. But he was slow to move at first as well. So, got to wonder what happened there. Peters works the two on two to perfection. Cochran down the left side. Abila will work to the net. Puck to flex off of him and in. Two to one lead for the Indians. I think that was set up by Cochran. He got the, the first man to hit hit the deck to try to block the shot instead of take the take the um, body and just really drug it, drug it, drug it, and pulled it back out. Puck through the neutral zone, and Ben Mountain goes into the right wing corner for Peters Township on the attack, but he's skated off the puck. Spinning behind his own net is Muser. Plays it to the far side to Wagner. He clears the zone. Puck is back at the Peters blue line. Pass for Mountain. It is too far, but he deflects it into the zone. Icing is waved off, and that allows the Indians to change lines. 9-10 to go in the third period. Shot, and a pad save. Rebound. That is also stopped. Tylenda had the first opportunity, and then Weaver the second, and Trey Lowe made saves on both. Puck is cleared to the far side to Brad Tylenda. Matt Tylenda, excuse me. Back in the zone, and now Back to center ice to Will Dowds who puts it up at the park as an opportunity. Two on two. Bouncing puck and now knocked off the puck as he couldn't control the bouncing puck was with Doviak. And then a real nice check by Jake Raymore to deposit with Doviak on his wallet. Great point shot blocked by Peters. Nice stick work by Joe Spinabelli. Puck played on the near side. Bethel pinches but they can't keep. 
retreating into his own zone is Ryan Phelps. Will not be long enough for icing. Played back to the neutral zone into the skates of Wadoviak. Wadoviak to Dowds. Peters is there and will take possession in their own zone. Weaver on the backhand. Near side of Gilarowski. Nice pickpocket. Trying to create the opportunity was Louie McClendon, but he can't do it. Comes back behind the Peters net for Gilarowski. Spins on his away from a check of Gary Cerrone, who's back on the ice. His pass deflects ahead, and on the attack comes Rebels. Tries to walk it in, he does center. But a good job cleaning up the front by Will Dowds. He cleared it away. Now it does come to the point. Alvey keeps it in. His pass, though, is intercepted by Phelps. Phelps retreats behind his own net. Will walk it up the near side and dump it through the neutral zone. And boy, how 42 seconds can just flip a game over. Now at this point, well, Peters almost Township playing defense. Another scary line change for Bethel Park as Peters almost got a stretch pass through to Adam Alvey, but couldn't quite connect. Eckberg at center ice. His pass to Alvey has Rebels. Now Barnes. Barnes down the right side. Spins and dumps it behind the net on the backhand. To the far side, Rebels. Rebels into the circle. Good four check. Creates the turnover. Alvey shoots from an extreme angle in the left corner. That is missed the net. The rebound is blocked in front by Jack Wagner. Gilarowski spin move. Comes down the left side. Dumps it behind the net to Alvey. Back to Gilarowski. Backhands it in front. Oh, almost came through the weaver, but he couldn't quite free up a stick. Cleared by Bethel Park. And they try to free a man. The other way, Krzyzewski. But Krzyzewski was defended nicely by Eckberg. Through center ice comes Adam Alvey. Winds his way from left to right. He is knocked down on a nice check by Jason Bauer. Puck is in the Bethel Park zone, however. Put in front, cleared by the Hawks. Hits their own man, but second effort for Bethel Park. They'll skate it up and dump it into the neutral zone. Eckberg is on the puck. He seems to be everywhere on each of his shifts here in the third period. His pass for Ryan Madour is into the Bethel Park zone and Offside is called against Peters Township. 6.04 left in the third period. Andrew Bello for Bethel Park had the game's first goal. A power play goal at 8.29 in the second period. But two in the third for Peters Township. Carter Eckberg at 5.48 his fifth. Matt Emilio's first at 6.30. And it's a 2-1 lead for Peters Township. In this game, we were talking about Bethel Park just trying to play lockdown defense. Uh, now at this point, they've got to really kind of put the pressure on and, and try to get some offense going. Face off is in the neutral zone right near center ice. Controlled by the Indians and they dump it in and that's really all they need to do. Just play that style to protect the lead. They dump it to the near side of the net. Couldn't walk out front for a clean opportunity but Peters retains possession. They dump it around into the left wing. Ryan Medor was on it. Good job by Bethel Park to create the steal when Wadoviak clears it out. Coming down the near side is Antonio Esposito. Long wrister and an easy stick save made by Tony Lejeune. He has not been very busy in period number three. That's one. <laughs> That's the first shot Lejeune has faced. And, and the Be uh, Peters Township, uh, not only their defense, but their offense has really taken over this game. Loose puck. Teeing it up, firing it in a right toe save on the half slapper by Phelps. Lejeune made the save. Puck is in on the left wing half boards. Pitch forking at it. Bethel Park and a good shift for the Hawks. Trying to walk out. Esposito, he was knocked down. No penalty. And then his own zone. Getting possession and clearing his Matt Emilio. Up to Brady Cochran who gets around a check. He dumps it back into the Bethel Park zone. Five to go. And that's a good shift. Peters Township took about a minute off the clock. Although Bethel did have possession but two Easy saves, none really threatening on Lejeune. Puck to the near side, trying to dump it in and hits the lights of the heaters in front of us as Maduro is after it. That's the worst part about our venue, our view, is the heaters obstruct the scoreboard a little bit. 4.37 to go, and, and Peters Township has just employed a, uh, we're going to dump the puck and make you get it out of your zone. We're not going to worry about going man for man with you. We're going to make you go the distance. Yeah. That is sound hockey. I think I read that in Hockey 101. <laughs> Can I borrow that book? I'm still working on it. Okay. Only on page six. Okay. <laughs> I've had it for several years. 
left side is called against Bethel Park in the faceoff, or yeah, faceoff just outside of the Peters zone. On the near side, left wing side. Balcom, faceoff one though by Scott Colina. Played to the far side, trying to dump it in is Giovanni Carbonera. He has to retreat, finds Tylenda. Matt Tylenda will dump it into the Bethel Park zone. Misplayed a little bit. Oh, now they get another steal. Bethel Park, you take it. I don't want it. And then Scott Colina almost put it in behind low. He was sharp to make that save. Well, that would have been potentially a backbreaker in this 2-1 contest. But the Park gets it through the center ice. Tyler Krzyzewski down the right side. Tries to pass near side to Balcom. Deflected. Good job on the defensive side by Peters Township. Now in his own zone is Scott Colina. Backhands it into the corner. Now it's teed up on the boards. And that is a big, big body check throw by Ty Lenda. As Ty Lenda laid the shoulder into Esposito. The puck is cleared. Not far enough racing. 3.25 to go in the third period. 2-1 lead for Peter Township. Hawks in their own zone. They come down the right side with Louie McClendon. Cuts laterally. Loses possession of the puck. Picked up by the Indians. They clear it to the blue line, and it does come back to center ice. Bryce Evans goes into his own zone. Puck is on the near side. But the Park trying to create an attack. Peter Township has it jammed up, and they work it back into the Bethel Park zone. Phelps retreats. Under three to go. Phelps is in the neutral zone. His pass comes off of skates. It's into the zone. But the Park pushes it ahead. Can't get a clean shot. Good hustle by Bryce Evans, but he was on his knees. And just put a weak backhander in from the goal line. Evans tries to shoot. Evans is dumped. <laughs> from behind on a check by Jace Cochran. The late offside against Bethel Park. They tag up. Two and a half to go. Peters in their own zone. Here comes the captain. One of them, Carter Eckberg. Dumps it. Gains center ice. Dumps it into the zone. Indians change. Gilorowski will just dump it behind the net. In the Bethel Park zone. Gil in their own zone is Will Dowds. Gilorowski's put himself some solid point defense offensively. A couple big plays to hold the puck in the zone. Wyatt Slapper blocked beautifully by Bello. Bello comes out of his own zone now for the Hawks. Center ice, long slapper. Blocker down by Lejeune. Left the rebound in front, but his teammates clear that away with a minute 50 to go. Olivier trying to walk in. Has a man in front. Can't get it there. Trying to get after the puck. And squirting it for his Rebels. Comes behind the net. Goal out of that. He was knocked down by his own man for Bethel Park. Actually, I think he hit the post. You, sir. Fell down on top of Lowe. Shot blocked. Good pass, better save, or it was blocked again. Either Muser made the save, and they finally score! Swimming around was Trey Lowe. He could never recover. They came on to the stick of Adam Alavee. 3-1 Indians. I think after that, that spill he did into the, into the post, Lowe never really regained um, consciousness, if you will. Never regained his footing, that's for sure. 16. No, 15, sorry. Fifth goal of the year for Adam Alavi. At 15-35, three unanswered in the third period for Peters Township to lead this game 3-1. to one. And Bethel Park was scrambling. Low and the defense, everyone scrambling for the Blackhawks. Sam Barnes and Carter Eckburn get the assist. Bethel Park holds their goaltender. And that is empty to our right with a minute to go. A 3-1 lead for Peter Township. Centering pass by the Hawks. Knocked down and then falling down to make the play. As Matt Amelia gets it to center ice to Magor. But he can't shoot it. And dumps it into the Bethel Park zone. 50 seconds to go. Bethel Park in their own zone. Ethan Wadoviak comes to the near side. Gets it to the boards. Good check by Emilio, it does come back to center ice. Delayed offside, Peters tags up. But the puck clears it to the far side. Turning, stealing is Cochran, oh, he fires it just wide. Brady Cochran just missed the empty netter. 
Up comes the center ice. Down the left side. Two on three. Spencer Balkum. Balkum goes behind the net. Centering pass comes all the way out of the zone. Heading toward that empty net. But Ryan Phelps is going to get there first. 15. Now we get to 10 seconds. Last ditch effort for Bryce Evans. Lost it to Eckberg. Fires through the empty net. Blocked at the defense. Back along the near boards with four seconds, three seconds. And Peter Stalchip comes from behind with three in the third. They defeat Bethel Park by a score of three to one. Wow. Beautiful job. Beautiful job from Peter Stalchip to take over that game. Third period just completely took it over. Took over the final 17, did they not? <laughs> oh my, it, it, they just possessed the puck. Not only after one day he went down, but when they got the lead, they just took over the game as well and just kept the puck in the offensive zone. And, and when they were in the defensive zone, just really uh, were calm about it and, and played, played soundly. We're going to take a break and then back with our post-game show, including the Management Science Associates, three stars of the game. Final score from the Isoplex in South Point, Peters Township, three, Bethel Park, one. You have been listening and watching PHL High School Hockey, sponsored by Trib Total Media, right here on the MSA Sports Network. UPMC Sports Medicine is the region's largest and most experienced center dedicated to caring for athletes of all levels. And as we celebrate more than 25 years of world-class care, we're proud to offer more services, have more physicians, and treat more student athletes than any other sports medicine provider in the region. Why would you choose to go anywhere else? To learn more, call 1-855-93-SPORT or visit upmcsportsmedicine.com. Life is about having the confidence to know you can do anything right. I get that at Carlo. I graduated with top awards, but beyond the classroom, Carlo helped me learn a lot about myself. Carlo brings out the best in you. I know I'm going to be a fantastic nurse. I know whatever I come across, I'll be prepared. I can't think of a better place to start the rest of my life, because at Carlo, I know I matter. I matter. I matter. Enroll at Carlo University, visit carlo.edu. Energy assistance is available for people's customers this winter. LIHEAP, the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, provides grants to help pay winter heating bills. These grants are not loans and do not need to be paid back. Funding is limited this winter, so it is important to apply for LIHEAP now. Learn more about how a LIHEAP grant can help you or someone you know. Find out if you're eligible for LIHEAP by calling 1 866 827 1281 or visit peoples-gas.com backslash lieheap. The new home for the PIHL in 2014-2015 is the MSA Sports Network. Not only can you listen to audio broadcasts of high school hockey games online like in years past, but this year MSA Sports will be video streaming 25 games live and archived during the regular season with exclusive coverage of the 2015 Penguin Cup playoffs. Your audio and video home of the PIHL is the MSA Sports Network. Welcome back to the Isoplex in South Point. Bob Workwis, Brandon Showers alongside. Special thank you tonight, Scott Majeski and Jess Lebo handling the video portion of this broadcast and the technical portion. They both helped to get us on the air tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It was a good one. Uh, just four goals and none in the first period. Uh, the scoring started in period number two as Bethel Park got a power play goal. Andrew Bello on the deflection in front at 8-29. Made the score one to nothing. Bethel Park, that would stand up into the third period. And then a uh, third period that Peters Township took over, won this game. Great goal, goal of the night by Carter Eckburn, his fifth of the season. A tremendous individual effort for Eckberg as he came down the right side, made a move, uh, put it through the legs of the defender, regained, and then came into the right circle, beat goaltender Trey Low to the far side to make it 1-1. Sam Barnes and Joe uh, Spinabelli got assists for Peters Township on the game-tying goal. Didn't take much longer for Peters Township to take the lead 42 seconds later. Coming down the right side, Brady Cochran. He took a pass from Chad Wyatt. Came in on a two-on-two. -two, threw it in front. Matt Emilio 
was right there to deflect in his first of the year to give Peters Township the lead 2-1, to one, which would be the eventual game-winning goal. And then the top gun for Peters Township, Adam Alavi, got his fifth of the year scrambling. But the Park was just trapped in their own zone, scrambling. Uh, Trey Lowe was scrambling. The defense was scrambling. There were several opportunities. Lowe made some saves. The puck finally came in front, and with Lowe sprawled to the right of his net, it came to Alavi with a wide-open cage, and he fired it in for his fifth of the season. Barnes and Eckberg got assists for Peters Township. That goal came at 15:35, and that closed out the scoring. Peters Township wins this one 3-1 to one with three third-period goals. Shots on goal in the third period, 8-3 to three in favor of Peters Township. Game totals 22 for the Indians, 18 for Bethel Park. And on the season for Peters Township, Tony Lejeune is now 4-1, and, and he's going to lower his goals against average. It was 2, and even 2 coming into this game, so that will improve, and his save percentage was 917. That will also improve, and Trey Lowe has played every minute so far of every game for Bethel Park. His record drops to 6-3-1 and one after the loss tonight for Bethel Park. They're also 6-3-1, and one, and they'll remain tied with Cannon McMillan uh, in Class AAA. Bethel's now 6-3-1. and one. Cannon McMillan has a game in hand now on Bethel Park with a 6-2-1 and one record, but both teams have 13 points. Peters Township. 8-1 on the season, 16 points. Good enough to tie North Allegheny for the top spot in Class AAA. The Tigers are 7-1-2 and two on the season. For Peters Township, their next game comes up Thursday right here at the Isoplex in South Point as they host the Central Catholic Vikings. And for Bethel Park, their next game is a week from Thursday. They don't play again in league play till next Thursday, the 11th, the 11th when they host Mount Lebanon in uh, a triple-A matchup. So a pretty good one here at the Isoplex in South Point. One last piece of business, the Management Science Associates, three stars of the game. The number three star is uh, the forward from uh, the Peters Township Indians. That is Brady Cochran. He had an assist. Played a pretty good game all around. He had a great opportunity in the second period as well. He had an assist on the eventual game winner by Matt Emilio. He's our number three star. Number two star goes to Jack Wagner for Bethel Park. Wagner, the defenseman, played a ton of ice time, blocked shots. He did have an assist as well on the uh, power play goal by Andrew Bello. And our number one star of the game, our management science associates, player of the game, Carter Eckberg, the defenseman for Peters Township. Actually, forward slash defenseman Eckberg with a beautiful goal, the game-tying goal in the third period. Also picked up an assist on the Adam Alavi goal late. And uh, our player of the game is Carter Eckberg, one of the captains for Peters Township. And we hope to get Carter Eckberg on video after this one in the MSA Sports Center stage. That's it from the South Point, uh, from the Isoplex in South Point, from my partner Brandon Showers, also for Jess Levo and Scott Majeski. Thanks for their help running the video camera. Bob Work was saying good night. The final score, Peters Township 3 and Bethel Park 1. Hope you have enjoyed coverage of PHL High School Hockey, sponsored by Troop Total Media, right here on the MSA Sports Network. You have been listening to the PIHL on MSA Sports. High School Hockey 2014-2015 at msasports.net has been sponsored in part by First Commonwealth Bank, by Smark, by McDonald's, by People's Gas, by Carlo University, by UPMC Sports Medicine, by ProGrass, by the East Suburban Sports Medicine Center, by Monticello's Italian Restaurant, and by Management Science Associates. You can follow the 2014-2015 high school hockey season every day by logging on to www.msasports.net. The preceding has been a special presentation of the Management Science Associates Sports Network.